Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy to be back and filming. And today is the last in the series of my Remix mini series for blocks 19. This is 19 right here. And this is 20 right here. So, um, I hope that you've been taking the Riley Blake newsletter and reading it when you get the patterns for these each month, because that's when we announced a few months ago that um, because of Cassidy's pregnancy and because of her having the baby in November, that she wouldn't be able to film the last month. And I wanted to be able to film the last month, so we postponed it until this month. So thank you to everyone who has um, commented and said that was just fine and dandy. Now the other, um, blocks that I ended up doing on my blog. I did do a link here on my YouTube and put on my Instagram and all of that stuff, but I will leave a link again. So that's the last um, couple of months that I needed to do. And so now we just needed 19 and 20. And so that's what we're going to do today. But I do want to say, don't want to do too much chatting. I want to get right into the tutorial, but yes, Cass had her baby. He's adorable. His name is Reed. And she had him in November, and so at the end of this video, um, we're going to put a few pictures of him in so that you can see how cute he is and how proud I am. And so let's let's start by um, letting you know what shapes that we're using for these last two blocks. The, this is what we're using right here. Okay, these are the so simple shapes that we're using. And also, you may notice when I showed you these that, here, let me set that one there, and I'll hold this one, that these two are both flower blocks. So I did, the last two I wanted to do flower on a stem blocks, because that means, because we have 20 blocks in the quilt, now we have 10 flowers like this on a stem. So I was kind of, I don't know why, I just felt like I needed to even that out. You don't have to. That way, I think when I set my quilt, I'll put like every other one, the flowers on a stem. And so I will go through when it's time to um, lay out the blocks after I sew some of the shapes. I'll let you know which fabrics that I have used in each one. And so for block 19, let me tell you which prim shapes we're using. We are using one K11. And that's right there for the center. And then we have one each of the K62 and the K61. And so that's what those look like. And that's for the little rows there. And then we are using two K52 right here for the leaves. And then you'll need one three inch stem that's prepared, you know, the same stems that I've been using throughout, and then I pressed one end under by about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so I'll be, I'm going to pull this over here. I'll be showing you how to sew, you know, just kind of one of every shape. So I'll set those over here, and I'll set these aside. So there you go. Again, there's the shapes for block 19. And then... I'm going to switch these out, or they'll just add this here so you can see. So I'm going to tell you what we need for this. We need one K10, which is the circle right here. We need two of the K43, which are the leaves. You also need a three inch long stem with one and pressed under by a quarter of an inch. And then we're doing two of this X um, K60. And you need one in this fabric, which is what I'm going to show you, and then one in this fabric. So it's so we're doing two of them, but in two different fabrics, so that when we set them, we're going to go like this, stack them on top of each other to make that flower. Okay, and that's what I did in the prim quilt as well when I used those. And so let me set those aside, those aside. I'm not going to show you how to sew this circle because I'm going to sew this circle. So, you know, it's the same difference. And so let's set these over here. 
and whoop, let's begin sewing. I've got threads all over myself, but before I do, so of course I've got these traced onto the interfacing, just how it shows you in the pages of the guide here. That's the cutting, just like normal. And let me put that back there. And of course, I always have the link to the Sew Simple Shapes cutting guide. And I just wanted to show you, yes, this is my interfacing uh, that still comes in a three yard package. You know, so it's 20 inches by 108 inches in this package. But I wanted to announce that coming soon, I'm gonna have it in convenient 10 inch squares, 100 10 inch pre-cut square. So that's gonna be nice. This is kind of the prototype of what it's going to look like. But see, so it's just, so you can pull those out. Now, some of my shapes are bigger than 10 inches square, so you're still going to need some of these. But um, this is nice to have some kind of in a square shape that I use for my scrappy strings block and things like that. But it might be kind of nice to just pull one out. And that's what I used for these. That was kind of fun. So I just wanted to let you know about that. Okay, so now when I'm sewing the Sew Simple Shapes, I don't need my uh, Seam So Easy guide on here, but I just have it on here, um, you know, all the time. Of course, I use it when I'm piecing the stars. If you're new um, to this series and just watching this video for the first time, my stars, the cutting and the tutorial is in series number one, the episode number one in this series, and it shows you how to do, I do my backgrounds and all of that stuff too. So... What I'm going to do is just explain how I sew the shapes. So I just, after tracing them on, right sides together, I have this on a small stitch, probably about an 18 up to a 20. And I just start sewing like this. But first, let me grab some readers so I can see closer what I'm doing. And then I just sew right on the line. All the way to the point just exactly on the line I use a foot that I can see exactly where my line is so I don't have to guess I just go slower on those curves now when I'm coming around to where I started which is right here I'm just gonna over sew over where I started in fact I'm just gonna sew right off of there and then I'll pick up the next shape and start sewing. So I'll probably just go in right here and just sew right on the line, stop right onto the point. And then I just simply um, lift up my presser foot right here when I need to pivot or turn it. And because I chain piece when I come around to this, I usually just trim it off right there. Okay, so now I've got these all sewn right on the line. Let me put my little scrap of fabric in there. Okay, I'm going to go over this one. <laughs> I usually, when I'm sewing, I really get down close to the sewing machine, but I just don't want my head in the way. So I'm going to go ahead and sew on that line again. But see, you don't have to unpick or anything. That's awesome. You just have to go back in there and say, okay, I missed that little section and just sew closer in. Let's see how I did this time. Yeah, see, now I just went right in on the line and it didn't matter that that's on the outside. And then what you're gonna do is you're just going to clip uh, approximate quarter inch, a little bit smaller, I don't really go too, too tiny, but I 
Now I'm going to set this one aside because it's got inner curves. It needs to be clipped, so I'm going to set that there. Anything with outer curves does not have to be clipped before turning. So this would be considered an outer curve, so I'm going to set that in that pile. This is an outer curve. So all you have to do when, you know, remember when you're sewing is just slow down on the curves, just like you're driving, and then just lift up your, your presser foot when you need to pivot on the points. And that's it. Smaller stitch, sew right on the line. One other tip that I have um, is when you're, if you have a problem shaping your circles, um, sometimes, or even any of the shapes, if they're intricate or tiny, you could always sew around this twice, like just keep going and sew around it twice with the smaller stitch and it just reinforces that thread maybe a little bit. And you can use a little bit more force when shaping your circles and not have to worry about poking, you know, a hole out. Okay, so I just trim all of those that they do not need to be clipped. The ones that need to be clipped, I just, this one is what I call like a cleavage area where you just do one clip all the way to the thread, but not in the thread. Now, if you don't go all the way to the thread, you're going to have a hard time having it lie flat, which is why you're clipping in the first place. So I know it's a little bit scary to clip all the way to the thread, but just make sure, you know, put your readers on, do whatever you have to do, get some nice, good, sharp, pointy scissors, and just do one clip all the way to the thread. And then this is an inner curve. So within each one of these, I'm going to go ahead and again, clip all the way to the thread, but not into it, and just do like four clips that close together or that far apart, however you want to say it. And then that's going to lie nice and flat when you turn it. Now, when you're clipping, if you happen to clip into the thread and you're like, dang it, you know what's going to happen when you turn it right side out, then before, if you know you've clipped into that thread, you can see that you have, then before you turn it, just simply put it under your machine again and go back and forth a little bit farther in the one you clipped, and that will save that. So, you know, there's always there's always a way to fix something, and if you just, you know, you can try a few different things that I've told you in these videos over time, you know, to fix it and save it. Um, you know, you can always do another shape if you need to. Another tip um, that I wanted to let you know is you always want to remember that when we go to turn this, let me show you. Okay, so first I take the seam ripper and I'll just make sure it's not going through the fabric and just start like a little, little cut right there so that I can go in and clip that line. Uh, I don't think I went through all the layers of the interfacing. I didn't. Let's try one more time. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for this shape right here, this might be the most different to shape out of all of these, so I'm just going to tell you what I do. I don't clip all the way to the end there because I want that nice and intact, okay? But because I've clipped these, all I do is I just go like this, push out as much as my finger will allow me to push that out without, you know, doing a lot of force because I know that my turner here will help me to shape it, okay? So that's what I do with this, is just work on the points. I always have the interfacing to me, and I'm not pushing out on the interfacing. I am just pushing out on the fabric, and I'm actually doing it pretty gently because I don't want to poke a hole through. This is sharp, but not real sharp. This, is, this turning tool is perfect for doing my so simple shapes. I've loved it from day one. I've, you know, once in a while, if a new one comes out or something else comes out, I will try it, but I just, I haven't found anything that works like this one. So I just stick with this one, right? You know, that old saying, if it ain't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Okay, so you can see I kind of push out on the points there. Now, this is what it looks like. 
and you're like, oh, that's crazy, you know? So how do I fix this? So how I shape this is like, this is where the roller comes in, or you can use this end, or you can use your fingernails. But what I'm doing is I'm just simply taking two fingers and holding that and pulling that in so you can see that's exactly where it's supposed to shape. And what I do is I just simply take that roller and look, it creases it and keeps it that way. So I just go like that, keeping it flat on all four of these cleavage areas. And you can take your fingernails, go like this, your fingers, you can do this if you want, but I find this works really great. And the, you know, the trick to that is just holding these flat, not like this, but so that they're flat like this, and then pull this corner up so that it's flat. And then look at that. You've got that. You can bring it over here to the ironing board, and I just press it on the top and throw a clapper on there, and then that's going to cool flat. And so that's what I do with all of these is I just take this, do a little cut first. Just enough of an X so that I can turn these real quick this way. Now a shape kind of like this size. I'll just use my fingers and poke out what I can because I know my fingers aren't as sharp as this. Or as pointy, I should say. This really isn't sharp. And then that's what that looks like. And then I simply am using this motion like I showed you before when I do circles. I'm just pushing. And then this is cotton fabric. And so you can just kind of pinch it after you've shaped it. And it has a memory because it's cotton. And it just wants to crease where you even pushed on it just with your fingers like that. And because I clipped those inner curves... That makes it so, you know, that will lie flat like that. I just bring it over here. See, that's a perfect little flower shape there. I'm just going to put the clapper on top. Now I'm just going to do the same thing with these leaves, but I want to show you one more time. I know I show you this a lot. And we've talked about this before because I feel like I'm just showing the same thing over and over again because that's exactly how my so simple shapes are it is the same thing over and over again how you you know trace them cut them all that stuff trim them turn them but I still always like to show you how I do a point so with this I turn that as much as I can and then I take advantage of this seam allowance that's bulky in there because it's such a tapered point and I'm pushing on the seam allowance and then that's as pointy as I can get it that way so what I do is turn it sideways this is sideways this is why I love this one because it's thin like this it's not and so it allows you to get in there and push on that seam allowance sideways which lets you make uh, push that point out more. So see when you get to this, that's that's what that's going to look like. And that's as good as it's going to get. And, you know, that's what it looks like there. And that's all you need. You don't need it any pointier than that. It's, you know, it's just a leaf. But what I wanted to tell, I just remembered the one thing I wanted to tell you about this shape is when you're shaping this right here and if you're worried that it's not exactly flat because you didn't clip enough and things like that, you need to always remember if you're thinking to yourself, I need to do that again. I clipped the thread when I was clipping. Well, remember, this is going to be covered by this circle. And so you don't even see these right here. But, you, you know, you still want it to lay flat. But I'm saying if you accidentally clipped a thread and it's like you can see the threads coming out a little bit, don't worry about it because just remember it's going to be covered. So always when you're trying to, you feel like you've messed up on a shape when shaping it or clipping it or something, always look at the project that you're doing and see if it's even necessary to be worrying about it. Sometimes that area would be tucked underneath something else and it's not even worth worrying about because it won't even show. So 
this I'll just hurry and shape real quickly. This is a simple basic one because it's very easy. It doesn't have real pointy points that I need to do. So I just go around like this. When I'm pressing my pieces, I always want to make sure these this X that I cut is always open and flat because I don't really want to press it. Um, I feel like I need to get that a little bit better. If you feel like you need to stretch that cotton out a little bit, you just, let me see if I can show you. See what I mean how I'm just, that tip is on the cotton fabric. I am not on this side of the seam allowance. On the interfacing, I'm not trying to push the interfacing out. I'm on this side of the seam allowance all the way over here to this fabric. And you can just kind of gently push and see, and that will kind of push that out. Let's just see how it's a little flat right there. If it's been sewn flat, maybe not exactly on the line, you can kind of stretch that cotton. That's why I just love working with cotton. And so then you just bring it over here. And again, these clappers are so nice. You just have to put a little press on it and put the clappers on. And then I've got this one last circle. And I just wanted to show you that how I turn this. This is like the smallest size circle that I have in any of my sets. And I believe. And... I just turn it a little at a time and I, I'll kind of use these little corners of the interfacing to turn that. And that's as much as I can turn that. I can't, you know, get my fingers in there. And then I just do the exact same thing where I'll just do a very overall kind of start turning the circle like this. Kind of like, you know, shaping your, your pizza dough. <laughs> and I want to make sure that this is out. So I really use this tool for everything, um, you know, when I'm shaping. I rarely use this end. Sometimes I will for larger circles. But I have my piece right here in between these two fingers on my left hand because I'm right-handed, so I want to use my shaper or my turning tool here. And then I just start going around using very gentle pressure, but going this way. I'm, I'm never just poking like that. I'm always just pushing and turning towards the right as I go along. And then I just keep going if I see a little flat spot or a little point coming out. Shape it the best that you can. And then remember that this is not the last step that you're doing on this block on this applique shape specifically remember you're going to be machine or hand appliquing it and that you can kind of help shape it that way by you know the needle just goes in by hand and you can push those points in or if it's by machine and you're just doing a little zigzag that covers all that up so I'm just kind of maybe this video trying to let you know what you should worry about and what you shouldn't worry about because, you know, we don't want to worry about any of this. It wants to be, you know, it wants to be, your project wants to be a fun one. And otherwise, it's not fun to do. Okay, so that's just those shapes right there, kind of a basic of all of them. Now I've got, you know, I, I went ahead and sewed doubles of all of these when I did, you know, prepared these blocks. And so I'm going to go grab, I didn't sew doubles of this. I have some extras from made from other B backgrounds that I didn't use. And so I'm just going to grab those to show you how to lay out the blocks since my blocks are already done. And so I will go over to the work table and we'll, and show you how to lay these out. Okay, quilty friends, let's do this. So I've got number 19 laid out here and because I'm just using a different background I'm going to go through and tell you the backgrounds that I used so this outside one is from Calico and um, of course that's a, a re remake of my original Calico prints this uh, star points is from Prairie 
This is a bee background, my green stitch circles. And this red right here is a background in the Prairie collection. And then this right here is Calico. This right here, the yellow baby chicks is Calico. This is Prairie. And these are Calico. And then of course, these are, this is the original stem. So that's those fabrics. And I'll just bring this one in while we're talking about fabric so I can tell you the same thing. So this green background right here is from Prairie. And this is my bee cross stitch in denim. And this pink one right here is from Calico. I'm gonna bring both of these up a little bit closer, maybe when I'm talking about it. This plaid is from Calico. This is Calico. This is Prairie. And this is Calico. And then the same stem. And then of course, this is Calico. I can't remember if I said that, but this, I had to use the pink cherries and a star. And so that's a little bit closer up of that one. I'll bring this up closer so you can kind of see it. One more look while we lay this out. So what I started with is I took this three inch stem and then of course turned that in under. And from the center of your seam right here, you want to measure down two and three quarter inches and pin it into place, you know, to glue it or however you want to do that. And now, because I want my flower to be, because I'm going to trim this up to six inches, right? So I want my flower to be five and a half inches tall. That means this will be a quarter inch away when the, um, when it's sewn into a star and this will be a quarter inch away. Okay. And so I'm simply going to lay this on the five and a half inch point right here so that I know that this is where I want to put my flower tip right there. Okay. So I know that that is, let me move that pin down there, five and a half inches tall. Now with this shape, you can turn it either you know this way so the points the, the rounded edges are up or there's like a the inner curve but for this flower I'm having a hard time with my words do you know what I'm talking about <laughs> the curves are on the top and the bottom not the inner curves on the top and the bottom okay and so I'm just going to lay that that way make sure I do know it's centered because the center of this is right on the stem and that way and then this, I'm just going to layer right on top. You could have pre-glued this if you wanted to, um, meaning these two pieces together. I do that quite a bit. And then I just put the circle in the center. But these um, flowers with the stems are pretty simple layouts, right? And so what you want to do with that is, you know, just pin those in place. And then what you want to do is lay your ruler on the half inch mark right here because that's where you want that point to come up. And then this part of the leaf is flat. And so then you just stick a couple pins in. By the way, speaking of pins, look at my cute new, I'm so happy to be using this. It's my magnetic flower power pin holder. Look how fun that is. And I love how you can put, well, see, See how there's a point sticking out that way? All you have to do is turn it around. But look how you can have all of these sticking out like that. So you can just grab the ends, you know, the pin heads without poking yourself. But again, if you have a few that turn around, just turn them around and stick them that way. So fun. Anyway, so back to what I was talking about. Half inch up from the bottom. The point touching the stem and then just flat right there on the ruler. So you want to make sure your ruler is straight, half inch up from the bottom, and then you have that line to follow. And then I pin them, of course, using a design board. And then I got my trusty Sue glue, and all I do is lift up the layers and put a few dots. And remember, a dot is a lot. <laughs> and I just pin it down, okay? And then I let it, oh, you know, the glue dry about 10 minutes or so. And then I'll go ahead and take my pins out. Now remember that then you'll trim it up using your six and a half inch trim it ruler. And this line right here will be on this seam. 
and this line right here will be on this seam and this line will be on that you know so that you can exactly line those up and this helps you to know if this is too tall so you can see that this is your seam allowance and that's going to be good to go that was probably glaring in the in the camera but you get the gist i've showed you that many times so then you just trim it up and sew it into your star and so that is block 19 and so let's move on to block 20 and let's see you know i've always got my measuring tape and just a few rulers i especially use this ruler for most everything especially when this is this small of a block i don't really need a larger one and this is what you need for this you're going to do the stem the exact same way is you're going to pin that two and three quarters down from this center seam and don't worry that 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 seam right there is um you know it's just the raw edges right there because this flower comes all the way down like this so we're just going to do the same thing we want this to be five and a half inches tall so i'm just gonna i'm actually gonna pin this one first because that's the height so i'm gonna put five and a half inches tall pull this up to five and a half inches have this in the center right here i'm going to put just one pin right there to mark the height and then this is going to go underneath it and so what you want to do with this is you want to make sure that this seam and this seam is right here on this line and then you can see how far you need to pull it up to be centered i can see that that's too high cash you might be able to tell from that top view what do you think from the camera do you think that looks yeah i think that looks good hard for me to tell from this angle too is it yeah well I'll, I'll pin it and then i'll lift it up and look straight at it just to make sure yeah that looks pretty good and then of course you just go ahead and put that in the center with circles i usually put two pins in so that it doesn't go out of place now again this one you want a half an inch up as well so I grab my ruler, half inch right there, and how I want to do these, let me see, I think this was five inches wide, yeah. So I want the leaves to be five inches wide and a half inch up from here. So when you're doing that, I'm going to lay my five inch, my, I'm going to put my two and a half inch right on the center pin so that I know that that's centered right there. And then I know that I can put a pin right here and then pivot this so that it's five inches wide. I hope that makes sense. So I'm a half inch up right here, and now I can either make this taller or shorter, however I need to, to make that even with five and a half inches and stick a pin in, and then you can always just test it like that see that's exactly five inches wide and then you know lift it up look at it see if it looks uneven that looks pretty even to me and now it's ready for the gluing and trimming up with a six and a half inch trim it ruler and ready to sew into the star okay so that takes care of blocks 19 and 20 and that is how many blocks we needed for the quilt. Now remember in this um, series, in the very first episode, I showed you the quilt that we're using this setting for. So let me just pull this in. I've shown you the whole quilt, plus a full picture on my blog posts of the last few blocks that I've done for you on my blog. And of course, yes, I will leave links as usual. But this is, the original what I did first with my So Simple Shapes series when I had all of my So Simple Shapes up to my Autumn Love set. But these are 12 inch blocks and what we did was we did the pinwheels. You can see that there's pinwheel backgrounds but they were just larger pinwheels. And so we're still using the backgrounds for the pinwheels. But um, because these are 12 inch blocks 
and we're doing applique six inch blocks, you're like, well, how are we using that setting? But remember, once you sew the star around it, it's a 12 inch block. And I'm, when I say 12, I mean finished. At this point, it's 12 and a half, as were all of these blocks before they were sewn into the quilt. So we can use the exact same setting. This was 20 blocks. Let me just kind of unfold it a little bit. See, whatever I can get into the camera without knocking the camera. Sorry, sis, did I? No, you're good. Did I hit it? Anyway, so, you know, there's just a few, few of the blocks. And that was really fun. I did that on my blog. It's still on my blog. I'll still link it there. But what I'm trying to say is I'm going to link to this quilt finishing, the big finish of this quilt, so you know what all the measurements are for the sashings and everything like that. So I, my quilt will be the exact same size. My Remix Mini Quilt series will be the exact same size as this quilt, okay? And so what I'm gonna do, let's just talk about fabric. I think that I'm gonna kind of do the same thing um, with this, meaning um, I have the same for all the cornerstones, the same squares, but I have scrappy sashings because that's what I, you know, did with all of these blocks was did scrappy backgrounds. But I think uh, I, I just pulled these in to show you that I think I'm going to go with the denim theme on this one. And these are just several denims from a lot of my collections. Um, this one happens to be prairie, prairie, prim, B plaids. Um, cal There's a few. Oh, this is. Wait, no, that is prairie. I have a few denims of calico in here, but that's a cute one from prairie that shows the denim. So if you didn't want to use scrappy, you could use the same sashing for all of them if you wanted to. This from the B plaids might be really cute for the border. Let me see if I can get centered. That might be really cute for the border. And then I could use one of these prints for the binding or pick one of these prints for the binding and the sashing. I mean, not the, not the binding, the binding and the cornerstones. Or this is really cute as a binding, either cut on the bias or, I don't know. I was just thinking out loud that that's probably what I was going to do was denim. And so I thought I'd bring those in to show you. And I just grabbed some off the top of my stack in denim that would all go well together. This might be really cute if I ended up using this for the border. This might be really cute for the sashing as well and put some denim vintage trim in it. I don't know. But, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. Let me see if I can fold this going another way and showing you a block maybe that I didn't show you before. I can't remember if I showed you that one or not. But anyway, this was a really fun quilt to make. These have been really fun to make, and thank you so much for your patience and you know, I know you understand how it is with family and all of that. And I'm so happy to have the 20 blocks finished now and using a prairie and calico. And again, while I'm thanking you, I want to thank you so much for all of your kind words and messages. I have got so many messages about prairie and calico and you working with them and how much you love them. And I can't tell you how much that means to me. Um, I really appreciate that. I love how all of my collections go together and I love working with all of them and I'm happy to know that you feel the same way. And so I'm excited to get this um, put together and quilted and of course I will show it to you when I'm finished and I will be back doing another video probably next week now that Cassidy can get back to her regular schedule of filming which we're happy about and wait for just a minute and you get to see pictures of baby reed he's so adorable so thanks for joining me and i'll chat with you later